Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about Ubiquiti Unify's G4 Instant. This is their Wi-Fi camera. It's five megapixels, so 2K, um, and it's for use with Unify Protect. It's a very tiny little device, really is very small. Um, and I'm gonna go through this in quite a lot of detail. So initially we're gonna go through the specs. Um, then I'm gonna show you what you get in the box, etc. We'll do the setup. I'll show you some of the features. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bit of range testing on this to see how far it can be away from a Wi-Fi source before it starts to lose its signal and the video is unusable. And that is really important for a Wi-Fi camera because that's one of the key things about putting them in is you've gotta make sure you've got a good Wi-Fi signal. But if there's good enough antennas on this, uh, on this device, then it should do pretty well even when it's not right next to the Wi-Fi source. So I'm really interested to see how that's gonna do. Uh, finally, what I'm gonna do is just talk about my thoughts on this camera, and I'll also talk about some of the pros and cons of Wi-Fi cameras, because there are a few. Okay, so let's get on with the specs. I'm in a Unify store, and I'm under camera security, and here is the G4 Instant. So there is actually a G3 Instant as well, um, but this one I believe is actually discontinued and my UK supplies say this is discontinued but it's sold out anyway. The main difference being that this has got two megapixels where the G4 Instant is got uh, five megapixels so it's a, a much clearer image. So the picture doesn't really do it justice as we just saw. It's a very tiny little device. Um, it's got uh, five megapixel 2K. It's uh, ultra wide so 102 degree angle on it. Six meters uh, infrared night vision and it wirelessly connects automatically to Unify Wi-Fi, which is a really useful feature. I have got lots of Unify access points in this house, so it should connect without any issue um, as soon as I set it up. It's got a few mounting options, and I'll show you those in a minute. Um, it's got AI uh, vent detections, which you will see in pretty much any Unify camera, and it's got integrated two-way audio. So you've got microphone to listen and also a speaker to talk. And it can be used outdoors or indoors. So that is the G4 Instant. If I scroll down here, oh, there's a few things I wanna cover actually. Um, you can use a USB uh, to PoE adapter if you wish. Um, it's got a longer cable, I believe that is. It's also got cover. Now, if you click on this cover, it says it comes in a variety of, uh, sorry, multiple colors basically dark gray, gray, or light gray. So it's not that many covers, uh, colors. But what I would say is that this case could probably be spray painted. So if you did want to get it a specific color, you could spray paint the case. Never spray paint the camera itself, but the case could be spray painted if you wanted to get it to a specific color. Okay, and if I just scroll back and go to the camera here, it will just show you some of the mounting options in this little video and the pictures down here. So you can wall mount it like this. Um, obviously you've always got to think about the power lead, but um, it's got a bracket so you can put it on a wall and then that can be angled as you wish. Um, you can also, it's got some little sticky bases, so you can just literally sit it on a side, um, which I believe it shows you in the deployment, yeah. So it's just got it sat on the side there, or wall mounted, or outside wall mounted, wherever you want it to be. So there's a few options from that side. And that is about it. Obviously, if you want to um, use Unify Protect, you can't run that on anything but a Unify device. So what would you need? Essentially, you can either run it off uh, one of these machines, so any of the uh, Dream machines. I'm actually gonna be using a Dream Machine Special Edition. You could also use a Dream Router if you wished, or a Dream Wall. Um, I don't think, no, it doesn't run the Unify Express. No, that's only got network. Um, and you could also, if I go to the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, that is an option as well. You could uh, run it off that. That's got a little hard drive in it. Or you can run it off one of the specific uh, MVRs, so the MVR Pro or the Network Video Recorder. Um, so there's a few options there. Uh, as I said, I'm gonna be using a Dream Machine Special Edition, and I've just got a one terabyte disk in there to get the recordings. Okay, so that's about it for the specs. Let's go on to see what you get in the box. Okay, so this is everything that you get in the box. This is the camera itself here. It's a very nice little product, um, really smart looking. If you just uh, unclip this bit at the bottom, you've got the uh, USB-C power uh, feed. And then this at the back is where you screw the bracket in. So you pop that bit off and then just screw that onto there. Um, the other thing that you have is a mic at the front here. Um, and this is the camera and the IR bits at the top there. 
We've got the uh, power lead and the power adapter. I've actually got an EU one here, so I'm gonna have to use an adapter for that. Um, and then we've got some screws. We've got a couple of um, little sticky pads so you can stick it down or something. And then this is the part that fixes to the bracket. Um, so you screw that to the wall and then you can just pop that on there like that. And then finally, we've got the little template which just uh, shows you where to screw. Okay, so adopting the camera was super simple. I just plugged it in and because I've got these Unify access points, it just picked it up straight away. Had a couple of updates and then it came online and the signal was excellent, so that was great. Um, it's a really nice clear image. We've got a sunny day today, so the picture quality is very good. Um, and you can see, you know, really good detail, dirt in the car here, the number plate, everything's very clear, especially in this foreground. Obviously, as we get a bit further back, it does start to pixelate. We've got a 4 megapixel camera here, so it's only got so many pixels it can work with. We can zoom in on this camera, but to be honest, it's only really going to make a difference close up. You're not going to get a huge amount of detail further back, and that's just because that's a bit too far for this camera, to be honest. And that's just a, it's not a reflection of the camera itself necessarily, it's just the number of megapixels it's got. Okay, so I'm just going to go briefly through some of the features. I'm not going to go too much into how Protect works. This is more about the camera specifically. So if I go onto Unify Devices, you can see the G4 Instant here. Um, you can do a lot of this in global settings, but I'm just going to show you on the camera itself. So if you went to Recording Manager, that takes you to kind of global settings. Um, you can change all your recording options. The thing that I want to show you really is about video detection, so AI events. This is really handy because when you're doing, uh, if you just have motion detection cameras, the problem is they go off all the time. So having this AI events is so much better because essentially you only really, well, you're going to get shown all these um, notifications in your timeline about when these things have happened. So when people or vehicles have been spotted, or in fact, you can also add animals. Um, and basically it just helps you find uh, specific recordings or things that have happened because you can just look for people, look for vehicles, and then that makes it so much easier, which I'll show you in a moment. The other thing you've got is audio detections. You've got CO alarm and a smoke alarm. I will show you in a moment. I tried to get these to work. I cannot get them to work. I didn't get any notifications about them at all, even though the camera was in the same room as the smoke alarm and the smoke alarm was making an awful lot of noise, it still didn't pick it up. So I'm not sure what the crack is there. Maybe it's that the sound of a smoke alarm is different in the US, I'm not sure. There's also a baby crying option. I haven't got a baby here to test that on, unfortunately, but um, maybe that will work, I'm not sure. Uh, a little bit about recording quality, etc. Overlay is quite good. I've put the time on. I think that's the most useful feature to have. You can also have the camera name bit about the bit rate and the logo especially if we're going to be uh, sharing the recordings with people having the time in there is very useful uh, so this is what I want to show you detection uh, and privacy zones so this basically is about where you are going to get motion detection so if we say add new zone we can essentially make a custom zone where those motion detections are going to be picked up um, and that just makes it a lot better if you've got things like I have here. So I've got a road there. I don't want to be notified about every single time a car comes in there, but I would like to know about stuff that happens in this area. If you want to not get notified about the whole area, you're going to need to delete that default zone and you can give that new zone a name as well if you want to say, for example, I just call that driveway. And then we've got our new uh, motion zone in. So uh, smart detection is exactly the same. It's just the zone for your uh, people, vehicles, and animals. And then line crossing. Line crossing is quite a useful feature. Motion detection tends to go off a lot, as I just said. With line crossing, you can put a specific line like this, and you can put multiple lines. It doesn't have to be one. Um, and that just gives you a slightly more accurate type of detection. So if someone crosses this line, or a vehicle crosses this line, then you're notified about it, rather than it picking up a whole area for motion, because you might have something uh, you know, moving in the wind or something like that, and it, it picks it up, whereas this is a better way of getting a more accurate uh, type of notification. And we can do that for animal, person, or vehicle. Okay, the other one is privacy zones. So for example, I've got a neighbor's window over here. So I could say, actually, I don't want to see into that neighbor's window. Obviously that window is a long way away, so it's not going to make a huge difference here. But if I just want to do that, and then essentially that just screens it from uh, the recordings and from the live view so you can no longer see that part of uh, the camera's image, uh, which again is very useful. And you can add multiple zones there as well. So you can block you know, several things. 
Okay, so that is pretty much all I'm going to cover in recording. If we just go to settings, it's got a lot of image tuning you can do. I generally tend to leave this in auto, but you can play with these settings if you wish. The microphone is on by default, but you can either turn it down or maybe if it's sort of, you know, next to a neighbor's house or uh, something like that and you want to have the, the sound off, you can just turn that off. Play with the IR filter if you want. Again, it's not something I normally do, but you could do if you wanted to. A bit about status sound, status lights. This is quite a useful feature. You can share a live stream with someone via a link. Uh, so you can just send that over to them and they will be able to view the camera. Uh, notification settings. So this is basically how you receive your uh, notifications. So if you want to be told every time a person comes on, you know, onto the driveway or a vehicle comes on the driveway, you can get a push notification that comes through on the Protect app or you can get an email. I've actually got, as you can see, the CO alarm and the smoke alarm on because I couldn't, um, sorry, I keep saying CO, it's carbon monoxide. Um, I couldn't uh, get this to work. So I put them on to see if I would get push notifications and I just didn't receive anything at all. So that's why that is. Uh, Wi-Fi settings, one you won't see on the other cameras. So you can actually just select a Wi-Fi network if you want that you want to choose from. Um, I don't need to do that because I've got Unify access points. So it's nice and simple. Um, and that is about it. I want to show you on the cameras themselves. Let's look at some of the uh, detections. This is a really useful feature. So if I go down here, this is one of my little trials. So if I just select that, you can see that the camera's picked me out, uh, identified me as a person, and that is an event in my timeline. So it's spotted that there was a person there, and then we can see that. It's given me a couple of seconds before, and then it's spotted me. It actually spotted me quite late there, but it does spot me really clearly on the way back. So um, yeah, it just highlights that that uh, that person there, which is really useful. You can also download this, and actually, if you download it, you'll see that the image quality is actually really good. It doesn't really do it justice on that other one, so it's a much clearer image. You don't get that boxing around the outside, but you do get the audio and stuff. So it's a very clear um, picture. If I just show you as well on the vehicle, I think it's this one. Yeah, so you can see it's picked up the vehicle um, and identified it and then it's put that on the timeline there as well. And that's quite far back now, it's still identifying it as a vehicle. So it's a good uh, it's a good feature and it's pretty accurate. Okay, so that's events. Um, playback's just basically all your playback, all your timeline, and then the events are within that and it shows you which type of event it is. So that's person detection, person emotion, person vehicle emotion etc what you will notice is there is absolutely no um smoke detection in this which is what i can't understand i can't get i don't understand why that doesn't work but it's uh, just doesn't seem to work okay so that's about all i wanted to go through on this camera on terms of the features etc uh, and showing you how it works i think for me the main thing is that this this image quality is is exactly the same as it would be for a hardwired connection and there's no latency at all like it's really um it's really very clear and very good and in fairness where it's sat at the moment it's, it is very close to a wi-fi point but as you will see on my range test this camera is pretty good for the range um so i'll show you that shortly Okay, so this is out of my driveway and behind that garage door, about three meters behind it, there's a wireless access point. So it should get a really good signal. Okay, so now we're into our range test. This is the camera plugged into a power pack and you can see that it's working really well. That image up in the top left hand corner is from the Protect app. Um, so you can see that it's got no problem at all. There's no latency. I move a bit further back and camera's fine still. We're still pretty close. Um, so it should work at this range. We're right back here, probably about 15 meters from the access point now. Still working well. Um, it seemed to get laggy for a second and then recover. I think maybe it was swapping between access points. I'm not entirely sure, um, but it did seem to recover. All right, move it all the way down the road. We're sort of halfway down now. Still working fine. Pick it up, take it even further. Still working well. See the car in the background there. Um, and now we're right to the end of the road. This is about 
60 meters so about 195 feet i think that is and the camera did not work here it just failed but interestingly when i move it back just a few meters it worked fine again so that was obviously the sort of edge of its range okay so now what i want to do is i want to talk to you about the pros and cons of wi-fi cameras and this isn't specific to the g4 instant this is generally about wi-fi cameras and it's from um, a practicality point of view but also from a security point of view um, so let's just cover that so my one of my biggest problems with wi-fi cameras from a practicality point of view is that even though they're wi-fi so there's no but there's a wireless connection to the network, they still need a power connection. So often, you as well, always, you're having to get a cable to it anyway. So it might be that you've got it somewhere really convenient. So there might be a socket nearby and you can just run the cable through a wall and get that set up nice and easily. But I often find that when people put Wi-Fi cameras in, they put in quite a lot of additional work to get an electrical feed to the camera when you could have just put a data cable and put in a hardwired camera, which in my view is always going to be the better option. I also have had many clients, and this is not just, um, in fact, it's nothing to do with Unify. I've never had it with a Unify camera, but with uh, things like Ring and Nest and things like that, people install Wi-Fi cameras all around their house. And then the problem they have is that they've only got a single router in the middle of the house and the Wi-Fi coverage just isn't good enough for that Wi-Fi camera. Now, as we saw, the G4 Instant did really well on the uh, on the range, but still, if you've got lots of solid walls in the way, you might have a problem with reliability. So what ends up happening is people put the Wi-Fi cameras in, and then they get us in to install additional Wi-Fi wireless access points and to give the cameras coverage, which you're kind of doing it twice. You might as well have just put in hardwired cameras in the first place, and then you wouldn't have to worry so much about the Wi-Fi coverage. So that's one of my sort of main sort of issues with Wi-Fi cameras, and that's why generally we don't install them. Where I do think they're really useful is indoors. I think this would be a great option if you just want to have them indoors. What I sometimes suggest to people is if they do want to have coverage in the house when perhaps they're away and stuff like that, they just get these cameras. You can leave them in a the drawer, just unplugged when you you know when everyone's there and you don't want to be recording what's going on in the house all the time. You go away on holiday, you can just plug them in, set them on the side, and you just get that extra bit of peace of mind from having that camera recording. Okay, so my other sort of negative about Wi-Fi cameras, um, and I'm slightly reluctantly mentioning this, but I do think it's important. They can be jammed, and I've done a quick Google, and I bring up some stories now about uh, Wi-Fi and uh, cameras and security systems being jammed. But because it's wireless, it is possible to jam it. It's not particularly difficult to make a Wi-Fi jammer. Um, they are highly illegal. Um, I can't actually show you how easy it is to, to make to jam a Wi-Fi camera because I can't make a jammer. If it's against the law, I could face a serious fine and some prison time, whatever. Um, but if you're a criminal, then you're not going to be bothered about that. So you could use Wi-Fi jammers to jam these cameras. Now, the reason I said I was slightly reluctant to mention that is because... In reality, it's much easier and cheaper just to buy a face mask and a hat and cover yourself from the camera than it is to go to this sort of effort of, of making a jammer or buying a jammer and then jamming the cameras. But it is a consideration. It is a difference between mains powered cameras and uh, sorry, PRE powered cameras and wireless cameras. You can jam these cameras. So a reluctant thing that I thought I'd mention. But overall, I think Wi-Fi cameras are really decent. Um, and this one in particular has been really good. I think the image quality is excellent. Um, we've not, didn't see that kind of lag that you'd expect on a Wi-Fi camera. It was a, it was a really instant feed. Um, and as we saw, the range was really good. So uh, I think you can quite comfortably put these up. It definitely would help if your Wi-Fi is really strong. And it definitely helps if you've already got your uh wireless access points in and it, you know, it can connect automatically to those points. So yeah, overall, I would I would suggest that you buy this camera. Um, it's it's a nice device um, and a good little lineup to uh, the Unified products. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.